everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry, my pup's name is Sunny, and each week we talk with different teams around the world about the impact that they're making with their own pups. Today we're going to be talking with Eva and maybe Sandra about their animal assisted initiative in India called Woofer Snow and Sky. If you're just getting started and you're not really sure where to get started, we have put together a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. If you do check that out, I would love to hear your thoughts, whether or not it's helpful for you and what would be helpful for you. So I will just get our guest in here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good morning. For me, it's good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning to you on Tuesday, and it's evening here in California on Monday. Okay, good evening. <laughs> and this is Eva, right? Yes, this is Eva. Nice to meet you, Eva. I'm actually in the hospital right now. Sandra is busy with her dog. They're giving anesthesia now. So mm-hmm. Yeah, send all your healing thoughts to Sandra's pup, everyone. Shine is happy having surgery and I know that that's difficult for all of us when our pups aren't feeling well so yeah it is <laughs> yeah well Eva I would love for you to introduce yourself and your animal partners and tell us a little bit about what for snow and sky yeah so the reason why we call our project who for snow and sky because it all started with them basically and that's even how Sandra and I met we were living both in Ahmedabad in, in India since many years, but we never met and this uh, therapy dog program actually brought us together. And we were having similar thoughts, what we wanted to do, how we want to approach this. And then we joined Snow and Sky together and uh, they accomplish each other very well, actually. One is a young, large dog and the other one is an old, smaller dog. So they have different personalities and both are good for different things. and in the therapy dog work world yeah so we started in uh, 2020 that was like we had the covid situation also somebody gave a workshop about therapy dogs and the work and all and um, then we actually got our dogs assessed by an international dog trainer from turkey and so then we were approved our dogs were approved and then we went underwent training together and uh, then we had to do the assessment test both snow and sky passed then afterwards because it was still difficult with many things closed due to covid so but we started to meet each other regularly thinking what we can do when all the things open up again and how we can approach it you know that's how it all started basically that's really great so you both met from that training on therapy docs that's how you met yes that's yes really great who was the training from her name is Gina. She's from Turkey, basically. Okay. So she was just here uh, on a visit, especially for that. Okay, that's yeah. great. And that's who you so, did your certification through as well? Yes, yes. And now, so this is already uh, more than two years ago. And uh, of course, therapy dogs, they are certified every two years. They have to be recertified, actually, because the time is changing, the ages, the temperament can change a little bit, you know. So we have to see how the dogs still like the work and which kind of setting is best suited for them, actually, what they love the most. So they get recertified and Snow and Sky, they got recertified in July of 2022. And we also have three other dogs who got their first certification. So now we have total five certified dogs. And who are they? Who are the dogs that joined you this summer? So um, that is a Storm. Storm is also a white Swiss Shepherd and she is uh, Sandra's dog. Shine the Indian Spitz, also Sandra's dog. And I have a rough collie. Her name is Sandy. She will be two years in um, March. So she got recently certified by Animal Angel Foundation in uh, Pune. They certify under pet partners from the USA. So I went there to Pune. I had some training and then I went for the test. With Manal, yeah. right? Read Manal, exactly, yeah. exactly. She is actually yeah, it was... our guest next week on Therapy Dog Talk. Awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. Yeah, I'm so excited to find out more about what's happening with therapy dogs in India. That's very cool. Yeah, so... it's still, of course, very new here. Minal is already working for uh, more than 10 years. But uh, here in Gujarat, the thing is very new, actually. The concept yeah. and we still, we are so much working on creating awareness People have to experience before. You can explain and explain, but the people really have to experience it to really understand it. 
you know? Yeah. So what was it like for you then to form your own organization and go to different places and see if they would be interested in working with you with animal assisted interventions? Very slow steps, very, very slow steps moving forward. Sandra did actually most of the work regarding that, but she has two children also. She started when Snow was already in training. She was already going to a few schools where her children were going to school. We worked on that and we went to talk to the principals. Then we, of course, did a session with the teachers and the principals and the staff for them to understand how it works. Yeah. Because they have to be also on board. They cannot be, so some of them are also scared, so they should get over that fear themselves first. And then only we can actually take it forward with the, with the children. Yeah. So it was with baby steps and we were also doing uh, sessions in Sandra's farmhouse. So she has a very beautiful plot where there is lots of greenery, nature, it's outside the city. So it's actually perfect to do the settings there. And we had sessions with children who come for different programs. We have a reading program, we have an exercise program and uh, activities for the smaller kids where they more explore and discover things. And the therapy dogs are kind of incorporated into the activities. And it's amazing when the children sign up for one month or for three months and you see how they change from being very shy and very... You know, and they become very confident. And even uh, we get the feedback from the parents, how the children are, you know, different at home. And uh, every time they go in the car, are we going to Snow and Sky? You know, they are so excited. And that's a good thing. The memory skills, the vocal skills, the language skills, everything is actually going forward. Everything is developing and the uh, kids get very confident. It's really good. That's great that you're able to see those results and share them with others. Yeah, yes. It's very touching in, in the heart because we obviously want to bring benefits for children, for people, and uh, especially also during COVID, there was very less social interaction. And kids really, they need that. They really need physical, uh, social uh, interaction. Online, uh, it's not the same at all. And for their development, whether it's emotional, psychological, but also physical, they really need to interact one-on-one uh, -on -one and in group and to understand how, the, how everything works and to feel confident, you know? Yeah. So, so you work with different activities for children and for the elderly. How do you train your dogs to interact differently with different populations like that? exposure okay. bringing them meeting them like that actually uh, you know we expose them to and we let them interact we go to the different settings and uh, so the dogs get very familiar and comfortable in the place and then we do you know little games between the people and the children and the dogs and like that uh, if we go again and again the dogs already know they get so excited when they can come along with us you know they know, they feel when we are going for work, we put the harness and uh, then they know they are so excited to go, actually. That's awesome. It sounds like you really know that your dogs enjoy it now. How did you know that they would enjoy it before you started down that path? Actually, Sky, my rescue dog, it's like a cross probably between a Spitz and a local Daisy dog, an Indian dog that was living on the road. Okay. Actually, Sky was also born on the road and she was very sick. She got rescued from the road by an NGO, an animal welfare organization. And then I was volunteering there. Many dogs, they are fearful of people or they, they take more time. But Sky always had that thing that she wanted to interact with everyone. She was very social with people, especially with people. And so I adopted her. And um, I remember I was living in another city, some um, thousand plus kilometers from here, southwards. And that time, Minal with Animal Angel Foundation came on a prospection, actually, in Hyderabad. And that time, they met Sky also. And out of my other dogs, she said, Sky has the potential. But we were still not there. And then that time in 2012, I think it was, nothing really materialized. But uh, then, I don't know, the universe somehow thought maybe I needed more time or we needed more time. 
and uh, now we are in Ahmedabad in a different place and we met again then we thought let's give it a go and see how it goes she did very nice with the first assessment test there is no point if she doesn't like it so first before they start the training they actually do the test also yeah Just to get an idea of how they react to the situation yeah exactly and because if the dog really does not have the feeling or the enjoyment factor the aptitude then why to put the dog in training and and then you cannot actually work with her you know yeah. because it's also about exchange of energies it actually creates mutual benefits so you have oxytocin release in the humans but also in the dogs so it's a mutual beneficial activity this human animal interaction which is based on the human animal bond yeah that's great so how old was sky when she passed her test and became certified she was 8 years old okay very cool. she was 8 years imagine and even after that because i did not really train her for even for tricks or basic obedience she did not know that much you know but she still at the age of 8 and 9 she is still learning and recently she used to do fetch but for so many years she never did actually and recently we worked again on this because it's a very nice game in the therapy sessions or in the animal assisted activity sessions in the play sessions so it's amazing the kids work on the motor skills even the elderly the senior people they also work and they see the dog will bring back the ball or the the toy they throw and sky is also doing these things she learned many things actually so there is no age bar to learn new things even for a dog you can teach an old dog new tricks <laughs> yes yes I love it. And she gets so excited. You really have to make her excited because sometimes she can also be very calm. But if you get her in the excitement mode, she will be jolly jolly dancing and all. You know, it's very nice to see actually. Yeah. Yeah. Eva, I'm wondering if you have a story or an example of what you really enjoy about this program that you've put together. Is there a moment that stands out to you where you're like this is why I do this? I think to bring also people and and animals people and dogs closer. We have three dogs here, okay? Free roaming dogs. They live in the communities. We know that dogs like the company of people. They live where the food is and the company is. But it's um, there are also many conflicts, you know? So we want to actually also let the people experience that the dogs are not just they're not nuisances. they can actually bring a big value to us to our health is not only that we want to help people and children to get better or to you know benefit from the actual uh, work but also to see the relationship between dogs and humans is not bad 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 you know it it can be really good and also we want to strengthen indirectly the bond between people and their own dogs they should not think oh my dog is my dog i give him food that's it people should realize that they actually might have even a therapy dog at home for themselves because the dogs many of the dogs they like to be around their family the family members they can they can hug they can pet they can sit next to them they can go for a walk which is a physical activity also very important for health they motivate them to get up on time and this and that so we want people to understand that they actually have a therapy dog at home and not just a dog you know but it doesn't mean that every family dog can become a therapy dog for other people so that's the difference the therapy dogs they actually enjoy working with all kinds of people you know but the people who have a pet at home they should cherish and really understand the value they have at home you know so we want to bring them closer and we want to make people understand when a dog is getting older or get sick they should not just put it on the side or when they travel or they want to shift abroad or to an other state in india they should usually i mean not usually i'm generalizing but there are many people who are also very good with their and they do anything for their pet animals but uh, there are people who kind of easily the dog is okay or oh, what to do now with the dog and many people unfortunately they abandon their dog you know we want people to understand they really have something more than just a dog in the house you know it's a companion it can actually help them with their physical health their uh, mental health you know how many puppies got adopted during the lockdown so many so many dogs but unfortunately now that everything is open many people even they easily forget also 
you know, they should not forget that these dogs actually helped them in that period when they were isolated from each and every one. Yeah, that's so true. They really have such a powerful bond and you know they give exactly. us so much. It's our job to give back to them and, and to take care yeah, of them even when it may not be convenient. <laughs> it's so unconditional. They don't pass any judgment. They're always happy to see you. Yeah. I mean, you feel immediately much better when you come home, you're tired from your day at work and uh they are there and they they want to say I'm here for you. Come mm -hmm. on, uh, play with me, pet me. And it's like some people think, oh, the dog is, uh, but actually the dog is helping you, is helping you de-stress from your hard day at work. Uh, okay, you sat the whole day behind the computer and now you play a little with, with me. You, you know, you play fetch with me or you go take me for a walk, but it's actually helping the person for good health, physical and mental, you know, but many people don't realize it. Yeah. They think, oh, the dog is uh, troubling me. I just want to sit, watch television, eat my food and sleep. But the dog is telling, no, no, no. Now it's time for some action here. Yeah. And it, it will help. It's better for the heart, for the blood pressure. You know, these uh, parameters can actually be measured. Yeah. And there are studies about these things. So it's not just some something that we talk out of the blue. We have scientific uh, proof. Yeah. Back yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of anecdotal too. If you just try playing with your dog or doing something that they enjoy. I know if I just play with my dog or do agility with her, like she's so silly. It makes me happy no matter what mood I'm in when I start. Like I just can't help but laugh because she's such a silly little girl. But they can really bring us so much joy. And oftentimes when we think they're being a nuisance, they're just trying to tell us that we need to take a break too. Exactly. Exactly. If we really go into it, they bring us in a different zone. And we see the same thing when parents come with their small child to a session in our place. Many times the parents also, usually it's the mother, sometimes the father. It's not that they just sit by the side. They also start interacting and they start playing. The child in them comes above. They forget about the outside, what is going on outside. They come in that zone that they really can focus on themselves and on their connection with their child. Mm -hmm. Because once they are at home, there are 10,000 things around them. I have to do this, 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 you know, but there they can forget about all these things and they can even focus on the connection with their own child. And they, they love it too. Oh, this dog. And sometimes initially they are scared, but after a while they start petting them and they go home with a good feeling and they feel, oh, this actually was really good for myself also. So they came actually for the child, but you know, they also got kind of a therapy, you know? Yeah, it sounds like in a way, it's another way for them to experience mindfulness and just really be present. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Live in the moment and uh, enjoy these moments. And maybe that will even in other parts, maybe they will actually take time. Okay, now I'll go with my child to the forest and go for a walk with my husband and my child, or we'll go for swimming together, or we'll not keep the phone on the side. I'll switch it off and I will completely go in the zone with my child and uh, all these things will it will also flow out of this actually yeah i love that well Eva, yeah it sounds like you've got quite a bit of experience here and have definitely done your research diving into studies on animal assisted interventions and the human animal bond i'm curious what advice you might have for someone who's interested in starting down this path with their own dog well, obviously, it looks like I'm very experienced, but I'm not even halfway there. There is so much to learn, so much to read, and I'm also a little bit senior. Huh? I'm not that young anymore, but I'm so happy that I am learning every day new things. And, and also the bond with my dog, with my dogs, I have multiple dogs, it's actually getting stronger. I see them from a different point of view. And I'm also more now observing their body language, more, much more than before, actually. This program actually helped me to connect even better with my dogs, to be very honest. So yeah, I would actually advise, see who is in your neighborhood doing this kind of work and connect with them and then start from there. That's how I also did. And then I met Sandra on the way and we are actually totally different personalities. 
and sometimes we have big discussions of course but it's good because we are kind of complementing and challenging each other yeah it's good because you have to be motivated and you need somebody also to push you a little bit uh, sometimes if there is less work or we want to train our dog to do this or that and these things take lots of time you cannot think oh i will train my dog for this trick in 1 2 3 yeah. it will not happen you need so much patience and that is actually another thing i learned to work on myself to be more patient mm-hmm. you need to have so much patience with your dog and yeah it's i don't know it helped me also doing this thing and seeing the benefits how the children are and the people are actually enjoying the sessions it's a big thing but it's ongoing process learning the things being in touch i see the scope is huge we obviously not have enough therapy dogs in amdabad and definitely not in india but it's amazing when people actually think yeah i think me and my dog can we also would love to do this and we can connect together it it would be great actually because we want to help uh, many people in different areas it doesn't matter what is the background you know as long as people get benefits children get benefits it's worthwhile really it is i love that thank you eva is there anything else that you would like to share while you're here i'm so happy that you invited me and i know we were trying for a long time i'm glad that we could have this talk and i meet you in person a little bit and uh maybe who knows i hope you come one day to india and you're more than welcome to stay with us in uh, amdabad gujarat and you could spend some time with us and the therapy dogs it would be amazing actually yeah Yeah, that would be really cool. I've been to Bangalore. Wow. This maybe 5 years ago or so. But yeah. Yeah, I lived in Bangalore in 2000. That was when I arrived in India in 2006. Okay. I lived one year in Bangalore, Bengaluru. Okay. Yeah. That very is cool. far away from here. Huh? That's yeah. a big uh, city, a very big city. Yeah, I have friends in your city as well, so I know they're they're pretty far apart, but yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What actually brought you to India? My husband. Okay. I met my husband. He is actually from Delhi, Sanjeev, and uh yeah. And where that's are you why from I came originally? Belgium. Okay. Very cool. I yeah. do have a question come in. Bark and Re Ferry wants to know if you're making any headway getting your therapy dogs into hospitals in India. So- not yet. Not yet. We are already happy that we are going to schools and that we are going to an old age home like a retirement home. Slowly we are working on it. It's a work in progress. Awesome. All right. But we really hope one day we can go. Yeah, well you're paving the way, right, for more people to understand therapy dogs. And I know yes. looking forward to hearing from Manal next week on the work that she's doing with the Animal Angels Foundation and then someone else from her foundation and I'm blanking on his name right now. I'm so sorry if he's listening and hearing me say this about the program at the airport as well. So yeah, okay. I'm really excited for learning more about what everyone's doing in India with therapy dogs, but you know, you all are paving the way to make it possible. for therapy dogs to help people in hospitals too. Yes, yes, it will happen definitely. All right, well thank you so much Eva. Enjoy the rest of your day. I know you're just getting started there. Thank you. Yes, we are getting started here. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for the invitation. It was very nice talking with you and uh, I hope everybody enjoy. Ah, uh, uh, yes. So Sandra is actually texting. We also are starting our program in the dentist area. So we are not in the hospitals yet, but we are starting to go in pediatric dental clinic. Oh, very cool. I think I saw something about that on your account, which reminds yes, me yes. if people want to follow your initiative, they can follow you at woofers, W-O-O-F-E-R-S underscore snow and sky, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. They can see our adventures and the work that we do. Yes. And, yeah, and I know there's more information there on your dentist program as well. So Yeah, that is uh, just going to start. We had some trainings and uh today in the afternoon actually I have a meeting with the pediatric dentist and uh then we have a program on Saturday planned for the children. That's just like a workshop. Yeah. All right. So we are very excited. Well, all the healing thoughts to Sandra and Shine and thank you so much thank for everything that all of you are doing with your dogs. You're thank it's, you. it's really great to hear about it. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.